time when King Arthur reigned, there was a much beloved knight, Sir Melion with his courtly grace, serving me with great pride. He married the daughter of Ireland's king, they lived happily for three years. She bore him sons and brought him joy, but woe she brought him tears. One day in summer the knight wished to hunt and brought both his wife and his squire. They chased the hounds as away they sped till they began to tire. While resting in a forest glen, a rustling came from the trees. The lady saw in a thicketed shade the grandest stag ere seen. She said, never. Stag you see before you, my life or love will be through. Your precious wife, Sir Melian, said, I beg of you, please do not cry. See this ring upon my hand, and let your tears run dry. With two fine stones this ring it is set, one ruby red and one white. No simple ring is this, my love, now witness its great might. Should I strip out my clothes and my shoes and stand here naked instead, take this ring and place the white stone upon the crown of my head. A beastly wolf I shall become, a hunter of great might. I will chase this stag for you and slay it on this night. He said, never have I told of this. Without this ring of wolf I'll stay. Man no more both night and day. My life, my wife be true. And I'll bring down this stag for you. Oh, Melian, what have you done? Traveled to Ireland's shore to find the false love he had wed. When through the trees came a line of knights with Arthur at their head. Though Melian could no longer speak, he took his fate in his hand. He went straight to Arthur and laid at his feet and would not rise again. Never had Arthur seen such a sight, said he, this wolf belongs to me. If any would harm him, then punish shall be, this wolf shall stay by my side. So onwards we will ride. So at his king stirrups the wolf kept a pace, matching the horses each stride. The king of Ireland for Arthur prepared a feast of which none know the like. But lo, in the back of the room stood the man who had stolen Sir Melian's wife. And Melian ran at the squire with all haste and sought to end his life. The young men of Ireland drew out their swords and attempted the wolf to slay. But King Arthur shouted, This wolf, it is mine. You shall not harm him, I say. If this wolf did not hate you, he never would strike, for his manner is gentle, you see. So tell me, O oh squire, and do not dare lie, what have you done to him? He said, Never did I mean him harm. The squire will but confess the whole plot. Arthur demanded the princess be brought to speak before the king, along with Melian's ring. The fair presence of Ireland came, shaking before Arthur's might. She gave the ring and begged for her life 
and then was removed from his sight. And to a chamber was Melian brought, the ring was touched to his brow, restored once more to the form of a man, and at Arthur's feet fell down. Rise, Sir Melian, and, and be not ashamed, this trick was played upon you. And King Arthur called to the princess again, as Melian, what he might do. Shall she be beaten, or shall she be slain, for your revenge is deserved? But say the will, and your will carried out, what shall be done with her? And Melian cried, never shall I lay my eyes on this viper ever again. Save our son, she suffer as I, and ne'er be human again. So ne'er shall we meet again. Thus ends the tale of Sir Melian, a gentle and courtly knight. For though his kindness and love were betrayed, yet still he spared her life.